everyone, Jester Bell is back with a review of Disney Plus's, Disney Plus's Loki series. It was trash. Stop! Stop! I know you're running to the dislikes and you're running to call me a DC fangirl or you're running to call me just anti-Marvel. You're running to call me stupid. I've gotten it all, you guys. I'm a DC and Marvel fan. Marvel posters, Joker poster, DC posters on the wall. Um, if you liked Loki, I know that there's some people defending this series, please. I don't understand you, so please leave a comment explaining to me why, why you possibly like this series. Because I'm, I'm actually a pretty forgiving person. I just did a review on Warrior Woman 91, like, I actually enjoy Black Widow despite all its flaws. I can for, I'm, I, I just want to be entertained. I can forgive a lot, but this series was bad. It was so bad on such a level where I'm not even finding superficial things to really enjoy about it, aside from some concepts I already decided that I liked in the trailers. So if you enjoyed anything about the series, please let, leave a paragraph or an essay in the comments I'll read and I'll understand you. I'm trying to understand why anyone would like this series, but I guess we should get into why I disliked it so much. So... Once again, I really liked the concept of a series where Loki is going to travel timelines in the multiverse and meet exciting other versions of himself that we've never seen before. Right off the bat, they really kill this idea of the timelines in the multiverse with the idea that all this time in the uh, Avengers Infinity Saga, everything has been planned, like predestined to happen, and what makes it worse is that everyone does have free will, but if anyone makes a decision to do something that's not in the plan, then uh, they get taken to the TVA and either thrown to the end of time as garbage or used as one of the TVI soldiers. TVA. Here's why this doesn't make any sense. So, first of all, it's it's really unclear, like, what counts as a rule that you're breaking? Like, they said it can be you decide you you're not showing up to work on time or or you Loki gets there because he picked up the Tesseract and he wasn't supposed to and like it was okay for the Avengers Tony Stark and all them to break into a um, timeline um, a new timeline steal the Infinity Stones put them back cause all that mess but it wasn't okay for Loki to do that and with these other situations like like okay what judges what is an offense of the timeline uh, and what isn't and how does that even make sense people are making decisions all the time so it's like you're making 50 decisions a day more than that and how come most are, am I supposed to assume that most of those are just predestined and planned even though these people do make their own choices and that a certain portion of people just happen by chance not to make the right choices it just really doesn't make any sense and it's a really half-baked idea in the series and it, and it just Oh, it really destroys a lot of my um, interest in the whole multiverse, because, uh, spoilers from here on out, we get that episode where Loki meets a bunch of different versions of himself, which I was really excited about, and I think that there was good casting there. We see Richard E. Grant as classic Loki. He really worked in that suit. I will say that's positive. We see alligator Loki. We see kid Loki. Kid Loki says that he was taken to the wrong timeline because he dared to kill Thor. Like, that's interesting, but now we can't explore those multiverses because you've said that everything's predestined and every time someone does somebody something that's not on script, then they just get taken away. Like, that's not interesting. But it's just, well, that just kind of sets up the problem in the series where you're having to explain the multiverse and timelines and such a vast universe of, uh, of um, uh, just to set up this vast universe we never have before. You need rules for that universe, but they will create a concept like that and they will like have a half it feels like a half thought and like they didn't really think about the ramifications of saying something like that and they'll just run with it by the end of the series you're just kind of like i don't like what are the rules uh, so um we will get to that in a few minutes uh because that's a huge part of the series of why it just really falls apart for me that they're really half-baked ideas there's a a scene when they're explaining people who get sent to the end of time, I think. That's the simplest way to put it. The way they explain it is just so confusing. And it's like, oh, and there's a monster at the end of the universe that eats you. And it's just so odd. And it's like, I feel that the people, it made me feel that the people who wrote this or who directed this, 
have never seen sci-fi before. Sci-fi is not their thing. So they just threw in a bunch of gobbledygook because they thought, oh, that's what sci-fi is, a bunch of gobbledygook, and I don't have anything better. That's what it really felt like. But um, that we need to get... There's just so much more. I'm already five minutes in. So much more wrong with this series. So the show is called Loki. It's supposed to be about Loki. The character in this show is not Loki. Now, the series begins, and we are taking the Loki from New York, from the Avengers, the one who killed 80 people in two days, the guy who was angry, vengeful, murderous... And in just one episode, because he watches, like, a, a video of his timeline in the original MCU, we have him breaking down crying and just being emotional and clumsy and open and a romantic... Uh, we'll get to that. A romantic and just weak and stupid. Just all these things breaking down his character to the exact opposite of what he was. He's not particularly smart in this series, uh, He's he's not very he, non intimidating at all. He's a character just driven by his emotions. All the things that were explored subtly about his character on an emotional level in the MCU are now just made as explicit as possible, and it neuters his character to the nth degree. This this show had me defending Thor: The Dark World as a piece of writing, if you can believe that. Thor: The Dark World, which is considered up till now the worst piece of MCU content, I was defending the writing in that movie over this, because in that movie you use an example of uh, how it illustrates how Loki wants attention. How he's like, does Odin share your concern? Does Thor? It must be so tiresome. The masking for me day and night. And it's like, in a subtle way, that is a way to express uh, how Loki really wants attention while keep still keeping his sinister and selfish uh, and destructive nature intact. Already set up there. In this series, he just whines, I want attention. I'm afraid of being alone. And it's like, Tom Hiddleston is an amazing actor. He is still amazing in this series with the material he has given, but the writing lets him down 100%. It's not Loki in this series. And you will especially, if you watch the show, you will especially see him flip-flop in episode 3 as soon as he meets Lady Loki. Now, Lady Loki is a very good character in the comics. Uh, this character in the show seems to be a combination of Lady Loki and Enchantress. And we get the character of Sylvie, who I do not like at all. Uh, but in the beginning it seemed like they might have had something there. I just, I was disappointing. I didn't think that she looked the part of either Enchantress or Loki. I thought that... Uh, she just was very bland for the role. Um, no offense, but I just felt that way. So the way I guess what she's supposed to set up is now Loki has a love interest. And this creeped everyone out because this is a variant of Loki. This is just Loki from another universe where he happens to be a woman. And so this is making even the people trying to defend the show uncomfortable because they are like, is this interdimensional incest or something? Listen, I think that Believe it or not, the concept could work. Um, but you would need to treat it... First of all, you would need to take time. You can't have Loki just do a 180 and become a, a little boy with a romantic crush all of a sudden, which is how I felt he was. Um, you need to like slowly take the time to develop this, and you need to treat it with the sinister and creepy nature and tone that it's going to make the audience feel. Like, oh, there's these two Lokis who are kind of getting together. This is kind of creepy. This is how you treat it, um, not this is, oh, this is a Tumblr romance, which is what it felt like. It felt like a Tumblr romance. By the way, it seems like a lot majority of the people invested in the show are people sh shipping either Silky or Lokius, you know, people making up their different ships for the show, which I think was part of the point, because Loki has always had some of that fan base since the beginning. I think that was part of the point, but... Loki's character is completely beaten down just to look... Like, people complained about him being neutered in Ragnarok. This is a completely different level. It, it's just ridiculous. So, the Loki... The, so, the multiversal rules do not make any sense. They'll introduce a concept, like, in a, a half-thought-of way, and it'll be something that should be taken a lot more complex and a lot more time to explain, but it's like they just didn't know what to do, so they just throw it threw it out there, hoping no one would think about it. Loki's character is completely beaten down, but there's more. There's the fact that 
that this is actually the slowest series that Disney Plus has put out for Marvel. So much of the episodes are sitting over tables and talking, uh, sitting over lunch and talking, characters talking, char you know, it's just characters talking and oftentimes you don't get anywhere. You'll get some minor developments that probably don't mean as much in the future, but it's just mainly characters just having conversations. And I'm like, what am I watching? This, this is, it's boring when you're just, uh, just watching characters sit and talk over meals all the time. And uh, it's not that to say that you can't have times in a show where you slow down and just have the characters talk and have development there. That's not a problem, but when you have just so much of it and it carries on for so long, takes up so much time, the audience is going to lose interest and their patience is going to be tried. And that was just so much of this show, especially the finale. I was like, the finale is probably going to be bad, uh, unbelievably bad and ridiculous, but the finale was like 45 minutes of talking to get to five minutes of a point made. That's what I'm talking about here. So, uh, it's slow, it's, it's characters are assassinated, and rules don't make sense on a level that damage maybe the entire MCU and hurt the multiverse idea going forward. Um, but we need to talk about the ending, because that's where I'm, I want to bring it all together. So, by the ending, we see a character, and everyone has pretty much decided that it's Kang the Conqueror, big Avengers villain from the comics. And he explains that the reason that he brought the both the two Lokis to him was to either be killed or to find two people to replace him and that makes no sense to me like why would he choose two Lokis to replace him why is it those two is he, he okay I get the idea of he's taking people from the timeline supposedly actually just so he has people a part of his TVA is that what it is but then what does the TVA really do it take other people from the timeline to throw away it Makes no sense. I don't understand how the timeline or the multiverse works in this universe. I don't, I don't get it at all. Kang, supposedly Kang, explains that he's doing all this to keep other versions of himself out of the timeline who are even worse and who would do things to conquer the timeline in different ways. Before we get to that, I'm like, okay, but if, if, if that's the case, then you would just need to keep people out of the multiverse from opening the multiverse or cro crossing over. Why? What is this prune the timeline nonsense? If I was writing the show, I would say that, okay, Loki steals the Tesseract and tries to use it to escape. He inadvertently almost crosses over to the multiverse, and that's what gets him taken away to this organization that tries to prevent people from crossing the multiverse, and that that's how it works. Not this prune the timeline thing, not this if you go to work and you don't show up on time, then you, then you get pruned. None of that. But it seems like they didn't think about that, even though I think that that would be a pretty easy fix. But anyway... So Kang, uh, long story short, um, uh, uh, Sylvie all of a sudden, this is like the most out of character moment of the show, Sylvie goes berserk, she's not calculating anymore, she's not the smartest, she was portrayed as, by the way, the smartest Loki, and they do so by tearing all the other Lokis down to make her look good, which I hate, that is not the way to write a strong character. She goes berserk and she kills Kang while pushing Loki, who is a sap, who's just like, I just care about you. I, I just don't want you to get hurt. She gives him a, a, a Kylo, a Raylo kiss and pushes him away back into another version of the TVA and kills Kang. And the end of it is basically what Kang said would happen. Another version is implied to have come and taken over. Now, this is the only part I like about it. The idea that there's infinite versions of Kang and you might meet one that is kind of ridiculous and silly like the one that they met. And you might meet another who's just a barbarian who takes over. Uh, Loki sees at the very end another statue of that same guy has replaced him that's now ruling overall. I like the idea and that kind of makes him scary that you might, again, meet one that's kind of an idiot, kind of silly. You might destroy that statue of him, but just another one even worse takes in place because this is who Kang is. I like that, but if he was so poorly set up at a show that's like this terrible with its logic, then... How is he going to be treated in the future when they try to, to try to use him? Because some people are saying, well, I'm looking forward to Kang, but I'm like, okay, how with these people am I expected Kang to be used in the future? I don't expect him to be used well, and it was really unfortunate that they just did not explain anything about him really in the show. Like, if he's just a man, how is he immortal? How was he able to get technology on this level? Um, it, it just, you know, he's just poorly set up, and so... 
I think that Loki is a show that was going to be very complex. It seems to be a lot more pivotal in the MCU than people thought. I think that they needed people who are a bit more... They needed a more competent production on it. They needed people who would be able to work out these complex ideas of setting up the multiverse. They needed more of a story inside of it that was uh, actual story for Loki and exploring these other versions of him, not just this weird Tumblrized, Twitterized romance. I feel like they... It feels like a show that had executives saying, set this up, set Kang up, and then it had people who just didn't know what to do with the rest of it. That's what it felt like. Now it's being made fun of for some of the things like... I think it was the composer who said that it wanted Loki's theme, that Loki looks at Sylvie and sees his mother, and people were joking. You know, people probably were not communicating with each other at all in the show. I just think that the show seems like it was far more important than just to have writing such poor quality, because I think that this is the worst quality show I've ever seen from Marvel. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and it assassinates characters, and it's cringeworthy to watch. That's just... That's just how I perceive it. Um, if you found some enjoyment in the show, once again, in the comments, please explain why. I would like to know some redeemable qualities in this show, even if I don't see them. Uh, tell me if you are still excited for things coming forward in the MCU, even though it seems to be struggling lately. And I'll see you next time with some more updates about superhero uh, movies and TV, because that's still what I like to talk about, even when it gets this slow. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.